Welcome to 99th Monkey Liberty News for Thursday, November 13th, 2014. This is Vaccine Awareness Week, and I haven't highlighted information about vaccines to a very large extent this week, but I do want to honor that, so I have some information here on vaccines, and of course it's a good time of year to uh, become more aware and help people become more aware because this is the time of year that they push the flu shots. And I did have uh, a video earlier this week about vaccines being about training parents in the first year. They're not vaccines aren't effective in building immunity in infants. And that was a Paul Joseph Watson interview or video. And in the video. He uh, gave the statistic that the U.S. has the highest infant mortality rate among developed countries and that the infant mortality rate here is 6.22 per 100 live births. And uh, he was kind of correlating that to the degree to which American infants are vaccinated in the first year. So this is a very, very serious issue. It's not just some casual oops. There might be a consequence later. It's really crucial for all of us to understand the dangers of vaccines, uh, and particularly for parents of infants, expecting mothers and uh, and young ch parents of young children. It's, it's essential to understand the dangers. Uh, once people are fully aware they might they still want to get vaccines they might uh, they might bow to family pressure or something along those lines bow to the pressure of their pediatrician it can be difficult to get medical care for your children if you refuse to have them vaccinated but it is possible uh, and you can visit Mercola or Natural News for a lot of help with that uh, so Again, this is Vaccine Awareness Week, and I have a few articles and videos. Uh, and this is kind of, you know, this is from Mercola, so good information here. And John Rappaport wrote a blog today, or I don't know, maybe he wrote it yesterday, but it's up today. Vaccines and herd immunity nonsense. You've probably heard that phrase even watching films like uh, Outbreak and other films about pandemics. Uh, the Stand, I don't think they mention it, but there's, there's this idea that when a certain number, a certain percentage of the population is vaccinated, there is what's called herd immunity, that uh, the population is less likely to be decimated by a plague. Well, many educated people believe that is nonsense, and among them is John Rappaport, and he explains why it is nonsense. From Natural News, here's more, you know, easier to grasp immediately argument that herd immunity doesn't work. CDC documents influenza outbreak among population that was 99% vaccinated with flu shots. So where, where's their herd immunity here? Herd immunity is generally considered to be something like 75% vaccinated. And here we had this outbreak of, you know, among a population that was 99% vaccinated with flu shots. So along with so many of the myths about vaccines, you know, like what people always say, well, if you don't vaccinate your child, then my child is, my vaccinated child is more likely to become sick. What? <laughs> uh, there is zero logic in that statement. Uh, this is an InfoWars video from yesterday. Operation Depopulation Exposed Africa. And Alex Jones was talking yesterday about uh, these, these programs to vaccinate 
African women, Indian women, and uh, many of them result in sterilization. And it's known. It's obvious. I mean, it's obvious to us. But uh, it is absolutely a fact that the vaccines uh, have antibodies that sterilize them. Not only are they just prevented from becoming pregnant, but it's an antibody that uh, teaches their, the mother's bodies to reject the babies. At six months, uh, so you ca this, they carry this baby for six months, and anybody who has ever uh, been pregnant can appreciate the heartbreak. They carry the child for six months, and then they spontaneously abort. And I want to call this what it is. This is murder. Again, this isn't just, oops, preventing a pregnancy. No, oh, she can't get pregnant. It's carrying a child for six months. And a six-month-old infant is pretty much fully developed except for some of the tissues that aren't ready yet to, to be in the, in the world, especially the uh, lung tissues. They aren't, aren't ready yet to process the air to get oxygen. But this just is, it, it is murder. I, I need not say anything else. God help us. Rick Ross was on Alex Jones yesterday. This uh, it describes the interview as explosive. It was excellent. It's a very good interview. And if you have the time you might want to uh, give some time to listening to it. He was, he sold cocaine. He talked about how he was tricked in, into just got, got on a slippery slope and needed money. His mother was pestering him about being lazy. So uh, he started to sell cocaine and the things that he learned, I mean, he was totally an insider and became fully aware that the CIA was involved, and still is involved, really, in uh, illegal drugs, bringing illegal drugs into the U.S. and, and seeing to it that they are distributed. Uh, again, God have mercy. This is the, the things that we have tolerated in our nation, the extent to which we have been tricked and deceived, is really astonishing. And it's time for us to be adults, <laughs> stand up, uh, and uh, just say, no, yeah. oh, no, you didn't. No, you can't do this to me. Uh, you know, like the old uh, The Prisoner show. I, I'm not a number. I'm a man. I'm a, you know, deal with me. Don't, don't treat me like I'm an animal or a stupid child. But that's, that's up to us and, and our responses. David Wilcock wrote a lot of comments on Benjamin Fulford's blog this week. Uh, and I, I, Koila Pele shared them, and uh, I, I may have mentioned them earlier this week. But what I want to focus on is this, this phrase. The cabal basically no longer exists except as a tired old story that they are telling in movies, pop music, video games, and media disinfo. Well, yeah, the media disinfo is a big one because as long as people still believe the lies, in some respects, we are paralyzed. Uh, so it's incumbent upon us to expose the lies and to counter the media disinfo to help people understand to show them facts figures articles that contain facts figures uh, help them learn how to do their own research where to look pubmed.gov about uh, medical issues and some other some government websites about you know uh, position papers and executive orders and what has really been going on and uh, I, I just I, w I wanted to kind of have this as the good news of the day, but it does need to be balanced because 
uh, th because it's still, you know, we still have the media disinfo and, and some of these other things, there's still a huge effort to deceive us, and there might even be an effort to kill us. And, you know, hey, we might think that we've won this victory. We might have our great republic. It'll be like after World War II, everybody will be happy. There will be a baby boom. Uh, we'll be celebrating. We'll start to relax and trust our government again, and they'll sneak up on us again. So no matter, you know, how much good news we have about the cabal being defeated, it's it's really crucial for us to remain diligent. I'm, right now I'm thinking about in the Old Testament when they went back to rebuild Jerusalem after they'd been in Babylon. They were building the wall with a sword in one hand and uh, masonry tools in the other hand. So, you know, what we did, we relaxed, right, in the 60s. Well, not so much in the 60s, the 70s and the 80s. We, we all relaxed. We thought everything was okay. Even in the 90s, we were still, you know, people were prosperous. We were doing well as Americans. And all that time, there was this evil root growing underground with a plan to uh, kill, steal, and destroy us. And that root will you know, continue to grow underground. It would be great if it's underground, but we'll still have to be aware of it. And one of my favorite allegories for where we are, and uh, if you've listened to very many, watched very many of these videos, you've heard me mention this before. Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, Homeward Bound. Now, in the film, the hobbits return to the Shire and everything's peaceful and pleasant. In the book, uh, Wormtongue and Saruman had come here and come to the Shire and set up shop. And even though Sauron was soundly defeated, they still had a battle to fight in the Shire for their day-to-day -day lives, for their own homes, their own families. Um, so the, these, you know, there will there are people who, uh, even if as the cabal falls and fails. Uh, there will be people entrenched places who are still fighting for them. And uh, <laughs> this, you know, I remembered this story, so I, I just uh, did a start page search. And um, I found this website today, I found out. A Japanese soldier who continued fighting World War II 29 years after the Japanese surrendered because he didn't know. Was this man any less dangerous uh, a week after the war ended than he was while the war was going on? No, not at all. So this is, this is the kind of thing, you know, a chicken runs around for a while after its head's been cut off. And uh, there, there will be traps remaining. There will be people who are still trying to implement the evil plan, even though it's not, not supported, mandated from above. Of course, the devil is the one who kills, steals, and destroys, and anyone who's directly tuned into him is going to still be getting that message and making an effort to do that. I do want to just mention, as I said, I, I found this website in a start page search. Uh, it looks like an interesting website. And you might have some fun here. <laughs> Submit a question or fact, write for us. Uh, if you have some time, I, I don't, I didn't have a chance to click around and see if this is a conspiracy theory website, but I get the feeling that it's not, kind of, but it could be fun to introduce this website to some, not conspiracy theories, but conspiracy facts. Let them find out today. And for our good news uh, from Natural News, attentive mindfulness makes people 83% more likely to have good cardiovascular health, study shows. And attentive mindfulness is also what's required to be aware of the real threats that are in uh, our lives at this moment. Fear is all about what happens in the future. And uh, if we're in the moment, we're not 
worrying, we're not anxious, we're not dealing with something that might or might not happen in the future. We're dealing with what is in front of us right now. And certainly this can help with projects, with work, with, you know, trying to accomplish things. Certainly can help with relationships. If you're in a conversation with somebody, be focused on it. If you don't have time for the conversation, uh, let them know that you'll get in touch with them later. Um, be in whatever moment you happen to be in. And it's just a good way to live and it's also a healthy way to live and uh, if you sometimes feel overwhelmed you know take a step back and see well, okay where are my thoughts if if your day has gone wrong you can go back and find that moment where where did my day go wrong and often it is uh, from stepping out of the present and stepping into uh, some circumstance that you know we have no control over fear is faith for the things that we don't want and I once heard a very wise Christian woman say that uh, we only have grace for reality we don't have grace for what might be so in order to tap into God's grace and, and take full advantage of God's grace it's crucial for us to be in the moment and to focus on reality not what might be and as to you know this this article was about health cardiovascular health and the tie-in is scriptural too uh, we can learn that from reading the scriptures men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth uh, this is you know, this is not being in the present uh, fear and expectation. Expectation is in the future. So again, if, if we can focus on the reality that is our current reality, what is before us in the moment, it can help our health, it can help our lives. Thank you for tuning in for today's 99th Monkey Liberty News. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hoping that you will love one another, take care, and insist on liberty and justice for all.